Well, hello there. I wanted to do another video in the series of the, the old man of the sea uh, that I've been doing. One of the things I hadn't covered was types of engines that you might find on board. Um, well, as we found out uh, that there's a new boat come out, the uh, Maersk have brought out an engine that can run on methanol. Um, so that will be interesting to see what type of engine that is. But So I'm going to concentrate today on main engines. These are the main propulsion units that you might find on ships at sea. So we'll start off with the very large container ships, the oil tankers, the bulk carriers, all those kind of things. Now they have a fixed propeller. It's fixed, or shall I say, directly coupled to the engine. The propeller will have a long shaft. It will go directly into the engine. So to go astern, you run the engine backwards. And of course, to go ahead, you run the engine forward. Now, these particular engines are two stroke. They run on this residual fuel that I've mentioned before. Uh, it's a bit like tar and uh, it's very, very heavy. And you, you have to have quite a lot of treatment, fuel oil treatment, the centrifugal separators, filters, uh, all those kind of things to keep the fuel clean and free of water. Uh, and you have to have lots of heaters. So these main engines will be absolutely massive. You'll probably not comprehend how big they are, but we used to, to change a piston, you had to climb inside the, the crankcase to change that piston. Um, now, these engines, what you call trunk engines, and uh, uh, sorry, these, these engines are what you call crosshead engines. Where the piston would be on a car engine, they have a series of supports that run up and down, and where the piston would go, you have a long rod that runs up inside the cylinder to the piston. This is so to enable you to seal the crankcase so that you're not getting any exhaust uh, sparks or fumes into the crankcase. It's quite sealed. And of course, that space now between the underside of the piston and the top of the crankcase is now, uh, you can now use that as compressing the air. That, that compresses the air as the piston comes down, it compresses the air. And then when the piston uncovers those exhaust ports, does that now compressed air go in to the uh, cylinder for combustion? And of course, as the piston goes up, it's compressing that air to such a high degree that the fuel is instantly vaporized, is instantly catches fire. And that's what gives you your power. It's this flame from the fuel that's being injected into the cylinder that expands and that pushes a piston down. Now, uh, some of these engines might have 10 to 12 cylinders and they will be roughly round about a meter across. Uh, as we're finding out that this uh, MV Darley that had a new super long stroke, but quite a small bore. It had a, a, a 90 a centimeter bore. And, but the stroke, I haven't, still haven't found out how much the stroke was. But on the engines that I worked on, they, they had a 96 centimeter bore and a 2.6 meter stroke. Uh, and they, the, the rev range on these things was roughly about less than 15 um, RPM and less than 110 RPM. You may have, may have had 10 RPM for m maneuvering. Uh, so you can imagine how slow that is. You can actually see the shaft going around. Uh, yeah, it's quite slow. And of course, at 110 RPM, that's uh, it's not a great deal, is it? So, so why don't they have a gearbox to get the engine revs up to turn the propeller faster? Well, you don't need it. With the size of the propeller that they're using, um, they're, they're using an absolutely massive propeller. But I tell you, they they're really are big. Uh, and that's enough to provide chuck the ship along at about 24 knots. Um, the, the first ships that I was, was on was some very large container ships run by P&O containers. We had two engines, two shafts, two propellers, one rudder, which made manoeuvring quite difficult. Anyway, so that's some of the engines that you get on ships. Some of the other engines that you might find on, uh, let me just look at my notes to remember. Some of these engines that you might find, 
will be directly coupled but through a gearbox now one of the one of the fishing boats that I was on we had a shaft generator built into the gearbox from the main engine so yeah we had the main engine coming in and out the top was the shaft generator and down the bottom was the, the shaft that ran out to the propeller now the the these ran at different speeds the, the main engine ran at constant rpm the, the shaft went through the gearbox like i said that ran at constant rpm when it was at sea um, and of course we then could generate our own electricity this boat also in the event that you needed to work on the main engine at sea you could actually run the generator that was on a different deck you could actually run the generator that would then power through the shaft generator and turn that into a motor and then drive the propeller shaft so that you didn't have to have the main engine. So you could uncouple the main engine from the gearbox and just run that way. Um, and so the other, one of the other types is a directly coupled engine that just goes through a series of 90 degree bends. They call it a Z drive. Now, it goes out through the back end of the boat into a separate compartment, down through uh, another gearbox that operates the controllable pitch propeller, and then it's a bit like an Azipod, um, but instead of having an electric motor deep down inside, it had a, a mechanical drive straight through. Um, so you could turn the propeller through 360 degrees, uh, so it gave you thrust in all directions. And of course, going into reverse simply meant that you pointed the propeller at the other, in the other direction. <clears throat> on that particular ship I was on, and we actually had two of these main engines, and it was on a hopper barge. Uh, yeah, that was a bit funny. This hopper barge, when it, uh, when it discharged its cargo, actually split in two. Um, it was basically two holes stuck together with uh, an accommodation that was balanced with pivots and stuff like this. So the accommodation stayed level, but the two halves of the boat just pivoted apart and dumped all its cargo. Uh, and of course we then have uh, Z drives that I was on a uh, car carrier up in Shetland Islands, one of the biggest uh, car ferries that I was on. That was directly coupled as well down through a Z, Z drive um, out through a uh, Azipod type arrangement. Then of course we get into Azipods. Now these are generally electric driven. <clears throat> now when I say electric driven we have what's called diesel electric. We have diesel generators that provide electrical power and then all the motors on the ship are driven by electric motors. My particular boat that I'm on now that's also diesel electric. Uh, we have three generators well, obviously we need three generators at sea if we're going full speed if we're going below certain certain load we can come down to two generators but we're running two motors on one shaft to provide enough power now uh, one of the ships i was on previous to this was another research vessel in ireland and, and that was the same arrangement although <clears throat> instead of it being an ac motor this was a dc motor and of course dc motors are oh, they're big they are uh, anyway, so we had one big main generating engine uh, that generated enough power to provide uh, energy for, sorry, did I say we had two main engines? Two main engines connected to two massive generators that provided the power to run two electric motors on the same shaft for the shaft um, power, uh, <clears throat> shaft motors. And on the passenger ships that I was on, it was the same kind of thing. We had Azipods that had giant electric motors, but these were submersed in a casing below the surface of the water. So that gave you a direct drive to the propeller. But of course, the, you then had another electric motor that pivot, pivoted the Azipod around to give you a, a drive, a 360 degree drive. So you could basically steer the back end of the ship any way you wanted. Um, and of course, uh, there are other engines out there but I haven't sailed on those so I've, I've simply sailed with directly coupled, coupled main engines I've sailed with reduction gearboxes uh, through a Z drive uh, kind of thing and also Z drives that are mechanical as well as electrical it's um, of course 
diesel generation is another story and they'll have different types of engines if you want to go go back to the big ships um, the Noel's first time we had a completely different set of generator engines so we'll get into that in the next one so I hope it's been entertaining and I'll catch you all later